yesterday um, on the, in the train station. Um, uh, I made it back home with a taxi from Hamburg to Lübeck. Um, so, and, but this is not my car. This is uh, two houses down the street. Um, and then today I almost missed the connection train uh, because of something like this. Um, but I made it. So um, here's a few words about the budget for 2014 um, that we applied for for the NEOS project. Um, in the good tradition of budget presentations, let's look back a little. So um, this year, we did not yet release, but uh, I'm sure you may have felt the vibes of, of uh, something going on. Um, so I will not talk too much about what will be. But we had three uh, of the large code sprints we have planned, um, one in Lübeck, one in Karlsruhe at Punkt .de, and um, one at uh, the DE6 in uh, Frankfurt which was only recently, uh, three weeks ago, I guess. Then we had uh, small code sprints. We had um, one uh, performance code sprint in Kiel uh, at the network team office, and we had um, another code sprint, or, well, you may, you may consider it a code sprint around the developer days uh, this year. <clears throat> so this brought the code base uh, forward a lot. We had a lot of uh, things going on there. And then we had the uh, user experience initiative um, you may have read about in international media on content management, um, largely driven by Rasmus, um, who is doing an incredibly good job with that. We had a release of uh, Type 3 Flow 2.0. We had various alpha releases of NEOS 1.0. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, a stable 1.0 release of NEOS is right around the corner. Believe it or not, this time it's really, really, really true. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that's and, and that's also what we what we largely spent the budget on um, travel costs, uh, hotel costs, and locations for for the code sprints. Um, obviously, then there was um, some amount of money going into into work packages uh, which we used, um, and uh, we did. Uh, um, also uh, spent some consulting, money on consulting. Um, so this year we had a smaller budget than the year before. Um, it went down to about 127,000 euros from roughly 200,000. Um, and we had, uh, we, we found a new working mode together with the association. Um, instead of paying the time of uh, developers, mainly Robert, Demke, and me, um, we uh, agreed on defining work packages um, with a defined set of features that need to be done, um, acceptance criteria, um, uh, a planned time frame in which you want to, uh, to do that. Um, and uh, so we agreed on those work packages, um, which um, worked out fine, um, or not, depending on your point of view. Um, we get to that. Of all the uh, money that we budgeted, um, travel costs were really invoiced very much uh, less than I expected. Um, obviously, a lot of people, well, I don't know, just have that paid by their company or whatever or don't consider it relevant. So um, uh, the latest numbers that I have um, amount to roughly 1,800 euros of travel costs that we, that we reimbursed the team members uh, throughout the year so far. Um, and since there is very little chance that there will be time for another code sprint, uh, there will probably be about that. Then some of the work packages were not invoiced or only partly invoiced. Um, sometimes uh, because, I don't know, the company uh, the team member works uh, with or owns just says, yeah, I don't mind. Um, it's more of a hassle to write an invoice and just say, yeah, it's just, you know, we are, we are profiting from, from the work that's done. So that left a bunch of money. And then we had external um, sponsors for the code sprints. Um, as already mentioned, that is always a good opportunity to sponsor. Um, so we had uh, Punkt.de who uh, provided the working location for the code sprint in Karlsruhe. We had the guys at DE6. The, the, um, they sponsored the hotel for all the participants of the last code sprint in Frankfurt. And they uh, let us use their meeting center. Um, without wanting anything. And uh, breakfast and lunch. And breakfast and lunch. Yeah, they had full, the full catering package, you know. 
someone coming in and filling up the coffee and bringing new, new food and stuff. So that was really cool. And then we had more. We had uh, food sponsors, coffee sponsors, drink sponsors, GitHub, Mark, um, see-through web from Canada. I mean, how, how awesome is that? Uh, Apimenti are from Brazil, which is also quite far away. Uh, Jochen Weiland um, provided some coffee sponsoring. And then we had some travel sponsorships. Uh, Christian still hasn't invoiced a dinner that he uh, paid. So that's like, we saved some of the money. <coughs> yeah, yeah, well, aren't they, they weren't on there. They were not on the wiki pages so far. So we, you need just to edit that. still have that. 100 letters here for you. Ah, OK. <laughs> yeah, but they are. You, you, have, you, have, you have your rules for that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so at the end of, I don't know, August, September, not too far, not too long ago, we uh, gave back, sort of gave back, uh, 40,000 euros of the allotted budget to uh, um, the association. Um, and I don't know if you have found use for it so far or not, but uh, at least we, we had saved some and it was uh, foreseeable that we would not use all that. So that was 2013, or, although it's not over yet. Um, but we still have plans for next year. And that is, we want to do four large code sprints again. Um, those code sprints being large in the sense of we calculate with 10 people going there, uh, spending four nights. In the end, the code sprint mostly, most of the time, becomes like five nights because someone arrives early and leaves a day earlier uh, or, and the other way around. So it's the full week uh, for, for most of the sprints. And then in addition to that, because the two code sprints, the small ones we had, were so good, um, but we didn't really have a budget for them, um, we decided to, to actually plan for eight smaller code sprints throughout the year. Um, two per quarter or not, depending on what comes up and how people's timelines are. So um, those being small in the sense of only three days uh, and a little uh, smaller in the number of participants. And then on top of that, we want to have some, still some, some uh, budget for uh, work packages and for QA work. I'll show you the numbers in a second, <clears throat> or 10. And then, of course, uh, those are the plans, but what's the goal? I mean, yeah, we do a code sprint, and what's the, what's the goal that we want to achieve? Um, first of all, the, the, the one thing that we really want to do is uh, we want to do a really good release of NEOS 1.1. Um, including things like a multilingual user interface for NEOS. Um, well, it largely depends on the community if the amount of translations we have uh, will be on par with uh, Type 3. Um, but at least we will make it translatable. And then uh, we want to have support for multilingual, uh, multilingual websites or, well, multilocale websites to be precise. So that means you can have any number of uh, combination of language and region and maybe even script, so you can write your, I don't know, Latin, Greek, and Arabics, or whatever. Um, because that, that multi-language thing is something that is blocking the use of NEOs for a lot of people. That's something that we hear a lot. Um, then, of course, what people use often in, in, in CMS is access control, precise control over what the editors can do, and also what the website users can do on the site. Um, so that is also on the, on the agenda. And then, uh, as uh, Sebastian put it nicely, anything that Rasmus uh, comes up with. So uh, that is, you know, any, anything in the UX uh, area about multi-channel publishing, previewing, editing, um, not being tightly bound to we are editing a website, but we are editing structured content, and that can be pushed anywhere. So that is also something that is um, in the pipeline there. But uh, we don't know yet what it will be exactly. Um, and then, of course, all that will probably need some changes in, or some, some new features, some improvements in flow, so um, that will just flow along. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the budget. And now you, you, were, you were expecting another quarter million that we want to have, right? No, 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 no. We are cured. And we don't need the money anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, not cursed. Um, so, the large code sprints, uh, four sprints, uh, 5,600 euros each, um, being a sum comprised of uh, hotel, travel, um, a working location, and um, a, some kind of gratification for the participants. Um, 
which is like pretty pessimistic because, well, one time we had the hotel fully sponsored. We didn't pay for the working locations in two of the three sprints this year, so that's good. Um, the same for the eight sprints. Again, hotel, travel, la 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 la. Um, amounting to this, uh, if I trust my calculator, then the numbers should be correct. At least the sum is what is on the application. Um, then we have work packages. Um, they are not defined yet, naturally, because they also weren't this year. Um, we did that in coordination with the EAB. So we thought about what we would like to do, important milestones on the road to 1-0, and then we discussed those work packages and their criteria with the, with the EAB um, and agreed on, yeah, this is in and this is, needs to be improved and refined. So that's 200 hours. Um, I just did a quick calculation earlier. It's like 2.7 something days a month, but that's not the point. This is for you know packages, like 30 hours to do this, to improve documentation, uh, 20 hours to uh, improve, I don't know, keyboard navigation in the, in the NEOS interface, things like that. Um, and then we have QA, which is um, whenever there is, I don't know, some bug that needs to be fixed really urgently, like I think security issue, um, or something, I don't know, the review queue has just been piling up for too long and there needs to be someone just sitting down for three days and doing reviews. Um, that kind of thing, like really quality assurance that no one else wants to do because it's either boring um, or boring. Um, and no one wants to do it. So that's the, that's the thing. So yeah, 57,820 euros due to 55 euros, uh, whatever, an hour, that's the rate um, the association pays. Uh, so it might seem like an awkward number, but why round it up or down? That's it so far. Questions? Um, the goals you plan for 1-1, one, one, is, is this finally to have a 1-1 one, one in 2014, or is it only the beginning work on... Um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Sebastian wants to say something. Yeah. Actually, you, you, might, you might have to know that Sebastian is uh, actually the release manager for NEOS 1.0, um, so yeah. uh, he will not right. be responsible probably for 1.1, but yeah, he still right. has some insights into <laughs> the pipeline. So, so you're right. Um, we, are, we are aiming for a beta version in a few weeks from now. We will uh, announce the exact date tomorrow in the, in the presentation. Um, then there will be, we aim for a pretty short beta phase. Um, so we definitely want to start with 1.1. Um, I actually, I, I expect that we start really thinking about that as soon as the beta is out. So as soon as the beta is out, we really get into the concept mode for the 1.1 already. And um, that means at least that we get very far in the next year. I mean, of course, it doesn't guarantee anything. As you've seen, um, we, did, we don't pay for any coding. Right, so we have to trust that somebody in the team finds it interesting enough to do the work. Actually, you know, to pick up the big packages because with 200 hours you can't pay anything. But I mean, this year it worked really well, I think, and the team was very, very focused, and that makes me kind of hopeful for next year. But of course, there are no promises attached to this budget. Clear. Yeah. About goals. Personally, um, I would consider it uh, a goal to do this in 2014, definitely. Because otherwise, I mean, if we do, if we, if it takes another two years for Nias to be uh, uh, to to be able to run a multilingual website, then I don't know. I'd consider that a failure. I, I hope I'm not <laughs> sounding like I promised something, but okay. Further questions? That's a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, guten Abend an alle Anwesenden hier. Oh, yes, thank you. Right. Uh, welcome and uh, good evening to the last session, to one of the last sessions of this uh, first day here at the Type 3 conference. Uh, I'd like to welcome you in the name of the Expert Advisory Board uh, 
for the budget presentations. Today we will have a budget presentation of the four uh, biggest budgets or the four most important budgets. Uh, actually the four budgets the EAB thought which would uh, be interesting to be um, explained to you here in person. Uh, the budgets we will have is the CMS, it's the NEOS budget, it's uh, the budget of the general communication which is pretty new and has risen in uh, uh, its amount and it's the marketing budget which will be presented. Um, all budgets will be available online in the next days. We try to publish them uh, overnight, so uh, maybe they are online already tomorrow. There will be an article and tweets announcing that. For all members of the Type 3 Association, there will be the uh, opportunity to uh, do a voting on which budgets they would like to see to be funded from uh, the Type 3 Association. So this is from my side. I'd like to hand over to Olivier Hada. Oliver Hada, sorry. <laughs> so many Oliviers and Oliver. Um, to Oli Hada for the Type 3 CMS budget. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Um, I'd like to present the Type 3 CMS budget um, today. Um, so I was given six minutes for presentation and six minutes for additional questions. So I'd um, like to talk about the activity in 2013. Um, so we had two releases. It has been the Type 3 CMS 6.1 and 6.2 LTS release, which is currently in the development phase. So it will be uh, released in December 2013. Um, so um, we had two active contributor meetings. So active contributors is the, the new way of um, dealing with the former core team. So we call it active contributors. And the most important thing um, in that regard is that a contributor needs to be active, and then uh, he's an active contributor. And of course, um, this is a replacement for the core team meetings. We now just call it active contributor meetings. We had two of them in this year. Uh, in total, we had 12 sprint meetings um, this year. So we had eight code sprints. Uh, we had three X-Base code sprints. Um, I just mentioned the, the X-Base code sprints because um, they will be part of the um, CMS BG next year. So um, the, the X-Base team will be covered by the whole Type 3 CMS team. And we had one user experience and one UI uh, meeting this year. Um, concerning the budget, um, currently um, the, or the estimated emitted amount until the end of this year is at 75%. Uh, yeah, so we have something in spare. We have um, not used all resources. The reason for that is that actually the, the co-leader um, budget, sub-budget in the CMS budget was not used very well. And we will see how we can address that um, topic next year um, by using different people that actually can use the money and can spend the money on accordant uh, leadership. Um, yeah, just to give a short um, overview about the current Type 3 CMS team. So currently we have uh, 36 active contributors we are going to do a cleanup round in November. So after the cleanup round, we're going to have uh, 28 uh, members that are actively contributing to the Type 3 CMS uh, project. Um, we have the release manager and the release team that are doing a weekly meeting um, concerning um, the next and particular topics that need to be done for a particular release, um, like, for example, the 6.2 LTS release. We have a quality assurance manager that is paid by that budget. Um, that uses one day per week um, to just keep track of the issues and um, bug fixes um, that are handed in into the review system and needs to take care about the accordant unit tests and that all patches are backported to the accordant versions. So currently we are supporting 4.5, 6.0, 6.1 and in development 6.2. So we have four development branches or four branches in total where we have um, regularity releases in the Type 3 CMS team. Um, of course, we have leader and um, the co-leaders. Um, yeah, for example, I'm the leader. I 
think I forgot to introduce myself. So I'm Oliver Harder, I'm leader of the CMS team, or Peter did that, I think. Okay, um, and we have two co-leaders currently. So this is the list of active contributors that we currently have. And of course, they want to do something. They are meeting in, in sprints um, in real life. They are going to have uh, active contributor meetings and the Typeless CMS PG is used to enable that. The topics in 2014 are, of course, the maintenance of our next LTS release, 6.2. Um, so we uh, agreed to maintain that version until 2016, so for the next three years, and of course we need to do something on that, and there's some work to do in 2014 as well. Um, the development, the further development of Type 3 CMS might be either the version 6.3 or 7.0, so we have valid ideas for both of these um, <coughs> concepts, for both scenarios. Um, but the last word is not spoken on that, so there's a strategy sprint and uh, communication sprint um, organized by the marketing team in November this year, and after that um, we will know and publish how to continue on that, and of course our focus is currently on the 6.2 release. Um, another topic might be to improve the user interface and the user experience in 2014. Uh, transition scalability and performance are as well topics. Um, by transition, I mean um, the possibility to actually use the parts of the flow project inside Type 3 CMS. So you can decide then um, to use either uh, the regular way to build extensions or to use the Type, uh, type 3 flow way of using uh, packages. Of course, that is no um, substitute to Type 3 Neo, so it's still Type 3 CMS, but you have the freedom of choice in that regard. And that's um, just the idea. Okay, so this is the release again that has been created last year, so uh, at that point we did not um, line out um, particular versions after 6.2 LTS version. So if we will create a 7.0, that would mean that we um, skip one version, one release cycle that is currently six months and use the full um, time of 12 months um, to do a 7.0 release. Okay. And now to the numbers, the BG 2014 and the accordant um, numbers put to that. So we have the release management with 7,200 uh, euros that is for the release manager, though that's not a payment, that's more like a um, thank you for doing the job, that's 600 euro per month um, that is paid to the release manager and of course the workload is much higher than um, this could be, um, that it could be paid with that amount. Then we have the important development part uh, or important design part as well, so if we realize that something needs to be done urgently, um, then we take that money and spend it to a particular developer or designer to have um, some issue, some bug or whatever fixed. Uh, in time and very quickly. Um, we have these active contributor meetings two times a year um, with around uh, 10,000 euro. We have uh, code sprints, so we planned with actually eight code sprints. Um, so this year there have been 11 code sprints. Now we have eight code sprints, um, a six participants for um, accommodation costs and for travel costs. Um, we have the quality assurance manager that is paid for four days a month, um, yeah, keeping track or keeping the quality high in Type 3 CMS. Um, yeah, we have uh, the leadership for six days per month, which is yeah, representing the team, uh, communication stuff, and also doing reviews and uh, development. And then we have the co-leaders. Currently, we have two persons, or we plan with two persons that are paid for four days um, a month. So in total um, we have an amount of 108,000 euro um, that we handed in for the budget application 2014. Um, it is a bit more than this year but um, yeah in the end it's a bit less. Let me explain that. Um, so this part um, is the active contributors budget. So we used to have an active contributors budget for both the Type 3 CMS team and the NEOS and Flow team in 2013. And these are the 50% the um, that were thought for the CMS team. However, it turned out that it makes much more sense to put that directly into the budget um, of the Type 3 CMS team. So in the end, it's a bit less than the budget that we applied for last year. Okay, that's it for the presentation. And... Um, 
how many minutes do I have left? I think about five minutes. So this is the chance to you to ask your questions. Regarding the budget, uh, it's, on. it's on, okay. Um, is it an opportunity that um, besides um, giving the budget from the budget application that um, also a part of the budgets will be uh, funded to, um, to crowdfunding um, instead of giving it just from the association? Is there some thoughts about this or... It's a general question uh, about crowdfunding of projects. Yeah, that is a possibility, uh, yet crowdfunding does mean a lot of organization, uh, which can be seen from the talk today from uh, Petra Hasenau. Also, there will be a written article on it. Um, the Type 3 Association does explicitly welcome if there's uh, some other funding as well, um, which uh, actually helps the project. Uh, and it's all, but uh, in this case, crowdfunding for now is not planned. And uh, might be, maybe in future that there is something. Um, yeah. So this is the crowdfunding situation. Does this answer the question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just one question around here. Um, actually, I would prefer to, to um, yeah, encourage. Um, for instance, a budget I would like with, with a crowdfunding. So um, I would like to ask the audience who would um, be part of um, the crowdfunding idea and would like to crowdfund their budget applications here. Who will do this? Not so many. Can I, can you, can I give you just a thought? Yeah. I think my thoughts on that is that um, basically, if you look at what we are doing, basically where, we, where people can contribute is the co code sprints, you know, travel costs, uh, hotel costs, and so on. Uh, having, giving people the location, uh, uh, sponsoring food, giving the, comp the, the developers a good uh, environment. I guess this is something where you have so the classical sponsoring situation from companies. Um, I would not like to have the people get away like saying, all right, let's, Let's hope that we get this crowdfunding going on. I think crowdfunding is something that, that makes completely sense if the uh, thing that you want to achieve is very spe special. In example, the grid elements last year was very special. I see that it's a core, uh, it's one of the core um, um, act, uh, yeah, uh, responsibilities of the Type of 3 Association to take care for their products. And, and basically, there's nothing that we can... I think 100,000 euros, we have to have a look at the end how much money we'll be having. I mean, this is a wish that they're saying. And if we just can just at the end find a way or how we can fund the money through different means, the better. But this is just um, something that, that, the, that you are asking from the Type 3 Association um, that we need to, to negotiate and to balance out at the end. So, I wouldn't say crowdfunding is bad, but I think crowdfunding, we have to really look, have a look at the special thing. Like, for example, this is UX stuff that you want to do. It could be that somebody says, oh, let's do this UX stuff with the crowdfunding uh, options and so on and so forth. Thank you. Just, just to on my side, so if we have code sprints, then it turns out to be really good that we have a good support. So we have around 500 to 1,000 euros that are spontaneously there by just asking on Twitter, and that happens quite well. That's actually not crowdfunding, that we uh, create a project for that and say, okay, you will get this and that feature. Uh, um, so we don't create a promise, but it's more a general um, um, support in terms of money. So we already have that. And um, when you look to the code sprints again, we planned with about six participants, so in real life, um, it's about 10 participants, and um, the um, difference of these four participants is already paid by this kind of um, funding or sponsoring or that agencies say, okay, I um, take care of the bills and stuff like that. So it's already like that, but not in an official way of crowdfunding. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, we keep in time with the first project. Before you unleash...
that looks promising. Am I ready to go? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about the communications budget. I've brought you an overview of this current running year and what the budget for the next year is planned for and what the parts are and how large the budget is. Actually, it's larger than yours, Carsten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look at 2013. We have an overall budget for PR work of 12,450 euro and some additional funding from the conference budget since traditionally we had um, communications for events in the events budgets inserted and I think it's better to put everything in one communications budget. Um, most of the budget this year was spent on an external PR agency for press work in Germany. We wanted to see if the hiring of an external PR agency would help our press um, appearance and the work and the amount of time we had to invest and everything. And we thought that it would be a good idea to start with Germany since I work and live in Germany and have a good idea what happens, does it work, and there's no translations necessary for the press releases and everything. So that was our experiment. And I'm very happy with the results since um, the first press release we did was only partly related um, with the, our actual product. It was the Web CMS 2017 forecast um, by Rasmus. And this was one of the um, very interesting things. We published the press release to this after it had been online for two weeks. And we still got a very good response to this one. And we had lots of journalists asking us for interviews, more information about it. It got republished, it got translated into different languages, and that was very good success. Then the press work around this conference was very good. We did um, three um, short press releases. We called it news flashes. We did one big press release several weeks um, before today. Um, we're doing interviews with journalists at this conference tomorrow and on Thursday. At the moment, we have four journalists who registered for the conference and who will definitely be here tomorrow and on Thursday. And they will interview members of the core teams, um, myself, members of the board and the EAB, and whomever um, seems to be interesting from the media who is represented by this journalist. So that's very nice because we didn't have this media presence in the past in this kind of um, width. And we had very good support by the agency. Actually, I did do like work, the same amount of work as I worked on press work than in the last year, but the outcome was a lot bigger since they took all the expertise they had to speak with the right people in, in the press world, um, had good ideas where we could place articles, how we could phrase stuff and so on. So that was very great support. And that led me to the idea that we could um, try to expand the budgets to more countries since Type of 3 is not a German CMS, it's an international product, it's an open source CMS. And that's why I discussed this idea with the PR agency and asked them for their advice, what would be a good idea. And that's how I came up with a plan of 2014. And in overall, we applied for a budget of 66,640 euro. This is quite a lot of money. And therefore, I will explain in detail what we're planning to do. Um, we'd like to continue the German press work or the, the German speaking press work um, since we also um, approached magazines and media companies in Austria and Switzerland, but we want to intensify this a bit. And basically the budget for the German speaking area stays the same as it was in this year. And then having NEOS, we plan for two additional press releases per year for NEOS. So that's four major press releases for our major products. One press release for the T3 developer days and the same package for the T3 
type of three conference, which means again, one large press release, three news flashes, invitations and interviews with journalists, um, and a report after the event, which will also be done this year. Um, maybe you already filled out our quick survey. If not, please do that because it helps us to write the report for the conference to the press afterwards. And we plan for one additional release or press release for some yeah, unplanned topic like um, the web CMS forecast um, we did this year. So we have some yeah, budget left for this. Additionally, this is the wrong chart, I think. Yeah, the international press work um, should be broadened to France, the Netherlands, and Denmark, because in those countries, Type 3 is already well known and accepted. So that is countries where we think we will have a great response from the press, and we will have also a great impact on the market, and therefore can broaden Type 3 and its um, media presence. And then we thought it would also be a good idea to see how can we perform in countries where we have not such a great reception of type 3 or type 3 is not well known. Can we achieve with some press work um, a wider, to reach a wider audience and make type 3 more popular? And to make this start in a country where we don't have to invest so much in terms of translation or um, getting in contact, we thought the UK would be cool. And that's why we also choose the United Kingdom, because Type 3 is not so well established in the United Kingdom. And this is kind of our test market to see um, will good press work in the UK help us to get a broad audience there. Yeah, so that's, and the package for, for all the countries is pretty much the same as in Germany. So everything we do in Germany will be translated. Um, they, the, the press will get um, invitations to the conferences or to the all events we do. And we will do all the press releases in all the countries. We will build up um, um, a recipient list in all of those countries. So the budget is a bit smaller in each country than in Germany, since not all the work has to be repeated. And, but still, there's lots of work to do. And if you look up uh, the budget application, you will see all the stuff um, separated in very fine granular detail, what is what and what could be left out if the budget is maybe too large for the budget of the complete type of the association. So that's basically it. If you have any questions. Any questions? Will you be working with the German PR agency for the other countries or, or are you going to work with specialized PR agencies in every country? We're working with a very large um, and specialized agency in Germany at the moment, which is Fink and Fuchs PR. They are specialized in IT and software communications and they have suggested to work with specialized partners of theirs in the countries I mentioned since um, then we can all channel all communications through one agency and we don't have to work with five agencies and have to repeat everything. So they are kind of our central hub in Germany or this can be shifted to another country um, if it doesn't turn out to be the best solution. At, at the moment it sounds very promising to have it centralized and they keep in touch with all the other um, experts in the countries. More questions? Can you please give uh, a small picture of what is the work of one press release? Yes, um, because it looks, in, in the first view, it looks a little bit expensive, so I get a better view. Okay. Um, one press release at first means um, the collection of information. So what should be in the press release? This means talking to, let's work on an example like the release of a major type of three version. So that would mean I would, or the, the press team would need to talk to the release manager like four weeks before the release and decide 
what are the most important facts to put in this press release. Then write up a draft for this press release and see um, what um, in the actual phrasing this would look like. This has to be some kind of yeah, special press language which has to be very neutral because um, journalists tend to be allergic to marketing text. Um, they just want the facts and no cream on top. Um, then we need, would need to send this press release back to the release manager and ask him if we phrased everything correctly and we have no disambiguation and stuff like that in it. If that's cool and everything's fine, then we would add pictures to this press release to accompany it, like screenshots or other pictures which might fi fit. And then we would start translating the press release to different languages, typically um, English and all the countries which are at the moment represented by Type 3 press representatives. Um, that is at the moment um, in um, Netherlands, in Denmark, in Norway, in Spain, in Austria, in um, Switzerland, and in France. And then we would prepare this press release in a nice form. So it, it looks like the type of three way, meaning putting it in a nice template and um, collecting all the addresses we want to send it to. That at the moment does the, the press agency. So we will send over this press release um, to the um, press agency. They will distribute it to the um, media. Then we will have um, a clipping service, which means we will look at the media and see where did this press release have an appearance in some form, meaning in printed press, in the internet, um, in the radio, in the television, whatever. And then we would get back a list where every appearance of the release is stated. So we see um, how big was the impact. That's also new in 2013. We didn't do this clipping service in, in the past. And I think that's a very good improvement since now we know what happens. In the past, we could only assume that people said, yeah, we, we, I saw it there and there, but we weren't sure if it had been in any other places or, or not. Yeah, so um, that's basically what, what happens around one, one press release. More questions? You mentioned the clipping service. Um, um, what are actually the results of that? How, how much um, does the, the distribution of Type 3 in the media, um, or how much raise has there been through the use of the agency? Is that measurable? And how is it in other countries? Um, I cannot speak of other countries because we don't have a clipping service in other countries than Germany at the moment, since we don't do it. That's what I like to do in the future. Um, the measurement of the increase is very difficult to say since we don't have comparable numbers at the moment. So it would be good to see the increase from one major release, um, press release, to another major release, press release. Um, because if I would compare the web CMS forecast numbers to a um, major release, press release, oh, I love that. Um, it's very difficult to say if it's an increase or decrease because of the topic or of the good work of the agency. So I cannot say that at the moment, but I can publish the numbers or the results. Um, if you think this would be useful, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that. Um, maybe I will put that on the Forge page of the press team or somewhere um, where it's accessible to everyone, but it's not too much in public because it's not something which is really interested in, in, in the public. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, to, to say two or few more words according the web CMS forecast, it was very interesting what kind of um, media was interested in, in this since it was um, taken very widely in the complete CMS world, like even Drupal and Joomla and our competitors of some kind retweeted this and um, were talking about it and thought it was interesting. And um, so this was like easy game, but it was still very good for us because we could 
place it as um, a type of three thing out there with the media. And one of the most important stuff we, we have to achieve in the press work is to stay in the mind of the journalists. And as I mentioned, the three news flashes, main idea of them was not to teaser a specific theme, but just to be in the mind of the journalist that they hear type of three again and again and again, and not being something that pops up once a year and then, oh, okay, I, I don't care. Last question. Um, do you have any intended results in mind by using an increased budget? And how would you measure if you reach them? <laughs> especially, I'm asking especially about the situation in the UK, where we are not well known, right? Yeah. And you want to increase the mind share of type of three. I mean, how would you measure if you reach that goal? Yeah, that's typically that what Carsten said, that we have to, to look at the clippings and compare them from the beginning of the year when we didn't start doing a lot of press work in the UK or none at all, and then see how it develops over the year. So since we ha will have two major releases of Type 3, we will see an increase or a decrease or none change. Yeah. That, but do you have a goal which, where you want to be? <laughs> at the moment, we don't have a, a number goal because we don't know what the status is at all. So it's very difficult to set a goal if you don't know where you're standing. So Okay, <laughs> one last final question. <laughs> I'm sorry, is there from the, from, the, from the German PR work that we did right now, um, that we can say that there's a goal for 2014 that Fink and Fuchs could tell. I mean, I know them, I've been working with them and they're pretty professional, they're really good, the work they're doing, so they actually they should give you some kind of numbers there. Yeah, that, that's a good idea, but yeah. since we wanted to wait until the end of the conference and the results um, yeah. to talk about goals for 2014, I cannot tell you right now, but um, that's certainly something we, we should set up for 2014 when we know um, how good we were doing this year. But um, just from my, my personal feeling and compared to the last years, um, we already did a major step forward in press work. So thank you very much, Sion, for explaining the budget application. Thank you. Everything okay? <laughs> okay, um, it's my first presentation in English, so be fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> at first, uh, Alain handed over to me because he can't be here today. Uh, tomorrow we'll, he will come, so I will took over this presentation, and so I, I'm sure that uh, somebody don't know me, so let's explain myself. Um, I'm a contributor in the marketing team since November 2012, and since April of 2013 I'm an active member. Um, yeah. I am also contributing to the editorial team and working for the marketing team is sometimes a little bit terrible because um, sometimes uh, we got a bad feedback uh, and the feedback means uh, is the marketing team a uh, working team and what's the outcome of the team. So, and that's why I took a short uh, introduction into the team itself. We have a new leader since uh, two, three months, uh, weeks. <laughs> uh, Alan is uh, our new leader and the co-leadership is by Berit. I'm really happy to have her there. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have been there. Uh, Boris from... 
Be quiet, please. Um, Boris, from the, he is head of the editorial team, and me. <laughs> so, since in the middle of this year, we started uh, an initiative to uh, get new contributors, and we have some contributors, new contributors there. One is Patrick Lobacher, then we had Sven Dietz and uh, Christopher Knapp. They are really new, that's why I added them at the bottom. So, how we work. We have regular hangouts uh, currently in a 14-day cycle. Uh, sometimes it's a, bit, a little bit longer. In uh, the beginning of 2013, we, uh, we have monthly meetings and uh, we, we see that it's not produ productive that we want. We have three until four full day meeting, real life meetings each year. And in each meeting, there is a central communication part with other teams. Uh, before the conference, we have uh, um, short parts with the, with the event team and the press team and so on. So what we are doing, we are organizing communication and promotion uh, of all type of free products. We managing the professional service listing. We monitoring the type of free org homepage. And that's a big point in our budget because uh, we defining new content and new campaigns and adding new concepts to the type of free org uh, page. In this year, we have three code, code sprints for this. And we representing the type of free project itself over several events, for example, the OSCON, the FOSSEM, or the CBIT. And we have pendants and lanyards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, envelopes. So, the main topics of our work in 2013 are uh, the restructuring of the team. And, we, we, and that's not so easy. And uh, the meeting cycle is one of the restructuring processes. We, pro uh, we start promoting all the free products, uh, type of free NEOS, type of free flow, and type of free uh, CMS instead of just one. Important, we start promoting. <laughs> We're changing the type of free org uh, to represent NEOS flow and type of free CMS as equal products. It's the main uh, goal in the last months with the editorial sprint and the type of free org sprints. And we are organizing the first marketing sprint, including a uh, general communication, communication workshop that uh, is done by people from uh, OSS Watch. Um, will be done. <laughs> and uh, we will have a general marketing strategy meeting there with all teams, and we have four days of creation uh, of materials. So, what is the purpose of our budget? It's totally easy. It's our daily work. So we have goals in 2014. We have three type of free org code sprints. Again, uh, amount uh, over 11,000 euro. We have uh, another in, uh, international events like OSCON, FOSTEN that must be decided um, over the budget is over 10,000 euro. And we have another marketing sprint uh, and the budget for this is over 6,000 euro. Then we need pens and lanyards, so we need uh, another budget for this. So we have marketing materials for over 9,000 euros. And the additional cost is only for traveling to our meetings. Uh, no one is paid by, by, by our or anyone anything else. So, and that's over 2,000 euros. That's all. So, questions? Can you go back one back, please? Yes. What's the sum? The sum is uh, 38,000. In the budget application we reached in, there is a service level agreement for type of free.org, but this is handed over in a several budget. Questions? 
Um, the international events like OSCON, FOSTEM, CWIT, that's probably also mostly traveling costs? Only uh, enabling costs. Okay. There are, no one is paid for work. For instance, what we did uh, for CBIT is uh, contribute uh, 1,000 euros to the CMS garden booklet, mm -hmm. you know, to be included in that. Things like that could also be, but it's, it's uh, enabling costs, everything. More questions? Um, I, want, I want to say something additional, because I see uh, the code sprints from the coding teams are uh, a little bit less with their budget. Uh, so uh, our budget is a little bit higher for three code sprints. I, I see it in the application. We have uh, from 10 until 15 people there for the type of free org code sprints. So it's a little bit inf additional information. Yeah, but, but you are, you are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> OK. More questions? Thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs>